morning. I uh, welcome you all to this lecture on foundation engineering and we were discussing on uh, settlement of foundation in the previous lecture and same will be continued for, for a few more classes and uh, I will today introduce actually I, as I have mentioned before that uh, total settlement will be consist of uh, three components one is immediate or elastic settlement then uh, consolidation settlement and secondary settlement or secondary compression and initially I took the uh, uh, in, 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 uh, elastic settlement or immediate settlement and uh, I have also shown the application with the help of a problem and now I will enter into consolidation settlement and this is actually you might have learned through your uh, soil mechanics and this is uh, what is actually this is the effect happened to uh, saturated fine grain soils and for example, it, it, elastic settlement and consolidation settlement if there is a, a large wheel load rolling along a roadway and then we will see that uh, the, the soil will immediately the wheel will depress because of elastic settlement and when the wheel moves away from that point and then it will be. Uh, bounce back reco recover it actually the no permanent settlement, but if that wheel load it permanently kept for uh, some time in addition to that whatever elastic settlement you have seen there will be some amount of permanent or, or consolidation settlement because of this consolidation phenomena. And what is this consolidation phenomena actually this is actually basically uh, as I have mentioned that it is a uh, it is it, it happens on saturated uh, fine grain soil and when the saturated soil uh, loaded and then both soil particles initially and uh, since the water is incompressible and uh, then when the additional load is applied until unless the water comes out from the void spaces then uh, actually there is no chance of change of void ratio consolidation again is nothing but change of void ratio. So, all void spaces initially occupied by water ultimately some amount of water coming out then your volume change or decrease in void ratio is not possible. But uh, when you apply load immediately after loading that uh, uh, that if the because of the uh, the fine grain that uh, the uh, path for coming out the water is very narrow and because of that initially that external load will be reacted in the form of excess pore water pressure. That means, if there is a uh, if there are number of soil grains like this soil grains are like this. So, inside this these grains are in contact suppose and then uh, inside this there will be pore pressure and because of that pore pressure actually what will uh, uh, then that pre when the water is pressurized then it will have a tendency to release the pressure. Then what will happen through this narrow openings between in, in between the particles water slowly will seep out and that will help to reduce the pressure and when the, uh, the pore pressure is reduced then what will be the extra pressure where it will go then that pressure will come to the soil and when the soil particles will be pressurized get extra pressure then they will forced to come closer. So, this and that way actually this void spaces finally, will be reduced and that is the way actually consolidation take place. So, uh, so this is the uh, then another aspect if you uh, test in the laboratory on a uh, soil sample and if you apply load P and then we will see over time the soil will sample will compress and at some time you will not see any change that means, under that loading the consolidation is complete. And then uh, another thing is that if you subsequently apply further another load then again we will see that there is a compression starts and it at the end of some time compression stops. That means, the consolidation also depends on magnitude of force or load or pressure. So, initially so if the smaller pressure then uh, at some amount of corresponding to that pressure consolidation will be there and if you again apply load again there will be consolidation like that. So, uh, but 
uh, when you are going towards end that means, uh, uh, after several cycles of consolidation like that towards end if you if to com consolidate you need more pressure actually that is the thing. So, that means, what I want to mention here that the consolidation suppose this is a layer suppose and this layer and the suppose this is a footing uh, this is a suppose footing and then a load is applied through this if you apply load P 1 you will have some delta consolidation and again if you apply uh, some load P 2 which is greater than P 1 then again there will be in addition to this there will be at the end of consolidation under P 1 again consolidation will start and again there will be another delta C 1 that was suppose then delta C 2. So, under load P 2 also there will be another consolidation that P 1 plus P 2 delta 1 plus delta 2 will be the total consolidation like that means, when load with the change of loading the consolidation also will be changing. So, the amount of consolidation depends on uh, largely depends on uh, uh, amount of loading. And then next thing is uh, the number of ways actually consolidation consolidation settlement can be obtained. So, we will discuss one or two methods and you can see that as I have no mentioned that consolidation is nothing but change of void ratio. Okay. So, if we increase the pressure you can see in this axis along this we have increased the pressure and pressure was less here. So, void ratio was large when you increase the pressure void ratio is decreasing. So, E p curve if you look then it will be a curve you will get E versus p plot will be like this there will be a curved line and and you can see that always at uh, higher at, at lesser pressure void ratio will be more and higher pressure void ratio will be less. And if we go do actually if you uh, uh, this is suppose consolidated and then if you if you unload then the decompression will be somewhere here it will not reach to this only it will be slightly less than that and if you again further loading then it will come in this path and it will after reaching to this unloading point again they will continue to the same part. So, this is the uh, another thing compression decompression if you see the you will see this is the way uh, consolidation uh, E versus P curve varies. So, this is some observation but using this actually so change of void ratio with respect to uh, pressure change of pressure you know that is the one by observing this how to find out the total consolidation suppose the uh, layer is uh, several meter of uh, several uh, meter thickness suppose this is 3 meter thick and footing is applied uh, footing is put here and then because of this what will be the total settlement here that to be obtained. So, uh, we know that if I apply P 1 some void ratio, if I apply P 2 some void ratio, if I know P 3. So, that behavior uh, if I get from that behavior I can uh, estimate what will be the total settlement. So, that is the one I will try to see subsequently. You can see here that in soil mechanics you might have learned this that there is a, a term M V m v is the coefficient of volume compressibility and this volume compressibility expressed a d p 1 plus e 1 by 1 by d p uh, and then this get cancelled. So, it ultimately it become a by 1 plus e 1 and unit is meter square per mega Newton or meter square per kilo Newton or mega meter square per meter uh, Newton and this is the one. So, the e 1 is the initial void ratio and a is the slope of E p curve. Suppose, there is a E versus p curve E versus p curve something like this and then if I uh, at any point at any point uh, if I take very small distance two points and then uh, you can find out change of void ratio or change of pressure and that ratio if you find out then you will get the A value or the slope at any point that will give you the uh, 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 a uh, and that is actually it is a e 1 minus e 2 by d p or nothing but d e by d p. So, you can find out that m v volume compressibility uh, 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 if I can uh, if I plot e versus p and from there what will be the pressure range if I want to find out that within that pressure range what is the value of e a I can find out and from that a I can find out m v. 
once I get the M V from definition actually you can see that uh, for uh, uh, I will just say for most practical engineering problem M V values can be calculated uh, for a pressure increment of 100 kilo meter meter square in excess of the present water. Suppose, if there is a footing suppose here and, and, and this is a consolidating layer. So, I can find out what is the present uh, effective wall water pressure and M V value how we will calculate? I will just take a sample and I will plot E versus P and what range I will do? 100 kilo newton per meter square in excess that way if it is 100 now then I will do up to 200 kilo newton per meter square. So, based on that uh, I will plot and from there actually I will find out the uh, uh, e, e versus P curve and from there I will find out A and from there I will get M V and from definition M V actually is the compression per unit thickness per unit pressure increase that means total settlements if there is a uh, at any point actually if any point if any point uh, uh, this M V is known that M V if I multiply it by the thickness of the layer and then multiply it by the pressure increase then ultimately it become a unit of meter. So, compression per unit thickness per unit pressure. So, that if I do that then uh, that means if I multiply by the thickness and then multiply by the pressure increase then ultimately we will get the M V. So, it was by this this. So, if I want to find out the settlement then I have to multiply this. So, if I know the M V value of a soil then multiply by the thickness of the layer and then the pressure increase. These two things if you multiply then I will I will get. So, this is consistently we are using uh, uh, consolidation as a delta. So, let it be delta consolidation delta C. So, total settlement will become uh, your M V multiplied by D P multiplied by H. So, D P is what actually? Suppose uh, uh, we, we calculate the M V for the effective wall burden pressure that means, because of the we will ignore this foundation because of the soil weight above this uh, uh, layer what is the wall burden pressure that is the existing wall burden pressure and now M D P means what when you apply the when you construct the footing because of this footing actually at this layer there will be some extra pressure will come and that pressure has to be calculated. There are some method I will discuss later on. So, how to find out the D P because of the foundation load at the middle of the clay layer. So, that has to be obtained. So, that is D P and M V is calculated from the E P curve and uh, H is the thickness of the layer. So, that will give you the total consolidation settlement. This is one way of calculating uh, consolidation settlement and in fact, M V is not constant as I have mentioned uh, over the depth uh, with the uh, go deeper and deeper then it will change. So, generally if there is a layer thickness is very uh, layer is very thick then it is uh, preferable to divide into number of parts the, then it will give you and if I uh, suppose uh, uh, this is the thickness of layer I can divide in two parts. So, I can find apply equation here and I apply equation here and that way it will give you little better result. And also if I want to find out uh, by this method uh, it is preferable to find out M V at different depths if it is a suppose 10 meter thick layer. So, I should find out at 2.5 meter 5 meter 7.5 meter 10 meter and then we can apply each layer separately then that will also give you better results or uh, if you apply for a single value obviously, you will get a approximate value not never be a very accurate results. Otherwise, if the layer thickness is known and uh, sample is collected and it is consolidation, uh, consolidation test is con uh, conducted and then uh, uh, void ratio change with the pressure change that plot if I do from that plot I can find out M V once you know the M V then you multiply by thickness and then multiply by the pressure increase because of the foundation load on the layer. So, that is the thing if you do then you will get the consolidation settlement though M V is not constant, but if it is not, uh, no option is there but not many samples are collected uh, uh, tested then based on that we can take some value uh, same value and get the approximate value of settlement. Now, 
uh, there is a uh, another uh, method of calculation that is actually uh, uh, the clay is generally formed by the process of sedimentation. That means, uh, the, uh, that uh, deposition of soil formation I have discussed or you might have studied in soil mechanics that it will be initially uh, fine particles will be with water and when the velocity will be reduced that fine particle will be deposited and that deposition initially will be thin then over that uh, subsequently layer will be uh, deposited and when and then upper layer because of the weight of the upper layer lower layer will be compressed or settled uh, uh, or deformation will take place that is nothing but natural consolidation and that natural correspond uh, co co consolidation for that uh, if you uh, uh, got the if you plot the EP generally you will get like this E versus P will get as I have mentioned and if you plot them in a semi log plot same thing E versus pressure if you put in a semi log one then we will get a straight line and that is actually uh, this curve is approximately logarithmic and the values are plotted to a semi log scale the year result is straight line of equation and this is actually generally uh, uh, that is called virgin consolidation also. And so, that means, uh, whatever load is applied the before that there is no other heavier heavier than present load is not applied to the soil part uh, soil uh, layer. So, that is also called be this con consolidation process is called uh, virgin compression and uh, for this type of compression uh, when happen and if you test the soil sample and then E versus P if you plot it will come like this and same thing if you plot in a semi log that means E versus log P then you can you will get a straight line. And if you get this straight line then from that what we can do you can see pressure P 1 E 1 and pressure P 2 and E 2 that means the slope of this line will be uh, actually uh, 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 delta E uh, delta E by the slope of this line will be delta E by log uh, 10 base P 2 by P 1. This will be actually and that slope we call actually compression index C C. This, this slope of this line is called C C compression index that is delta E that means E 1 minus E 2 divided by actually log P 2 minus log P 1 supposed to be and log P 2 minus P 1 means actually log P 2 by P 1 that is what it is done. So, this is the actually uh, uh, slope of this line and if this is the slope of the line then I can find out if I apply pressure P initially and then if I apply pressure P 2 suppose C C is known then E 2 can be obtained E 1 minus slope multiplied by this when P 1 2 uh, uh, with ad in addition to the P if there is delta P is applied this is delta P suppose. So, P 2 become P 2 equal to P 1 plus delta P if it is applied then actually what is the E 2 value E 2 will be smaller than E 1. So, E 1 minus slope multiplied by log P 2 by P 1 that is what it is done. Uh, so, ultimately you can see delta E equal to E 1 minus E 2 equal to C C into log or C C equal to del E by log 10 P 2 by P 1. So, this is the one uh, uh, one thing uh, uh, from this curve we can find out the compression index and using this also you can find out the consolidation settlement and uh, that is called compression uh, uh, that is C C method. So, we will see that next one. You can see many a times uh, when you collect a sample and if you uh, uh, load it and then corresponding pressure versus voltage you plot then you will get a curve like this. Initially, initially it will not start from the higher value and decreasing constantly it will be a low value and the curvature will be reverse and like that and then it will be a smooth curve downward curve like this. What is this actually suppose uh, a point is what corresponding to what actually when you sample when you collect a sample from a uh, uh, ground at some depth that time that the soil particles or will have a soil mass will have a will, will be subjected to a particular pressure. And when you sample it and take it out, 
the pressure will be released, pressure will be reduced. So, because of that uh, you will be uh, uh, that is why it is it, this zone is a recompression zone. So, uh, once this so th when you reach to point A that means, the pressure corresponding the field pressure then it will start from here fresh new curve this portion is a virgin curve and this portion is B to A is the recompression curve. So, because of that so, if I put E log P E versus P the same curve actually from A to C will be straight and A to B this portion will be little curve. So, we can ignore that part. So, between the portion which is straight I can consider that only because uh, the beyond A that is because of this releasing of pressure that is a curvature that is a different curvature we have obtained, but actual nature if you would have not collected the sample and same under same pressure you would have tested then uh, you could have got from here actually. So, because of that we need to when you plot E versus P though initial there is a curve uh, we know that virgin consolidation curve when you plot it in a semi log plot it will be a straight line, but normally the soil collected and test if I test and then based on the test results if you plot in a semi log uh, paper then we will see initially there will be little curve and then from there it will be straight line. Why this curve portion? Because of this this is a recompression zone this is not actual consolidation this is recompression because of pressure release its volume change took place and then when we apply pressure they can compression will take place it will go up to this one phenomena and beyond that there will be normal that is when you are increasing further from the field pressure. So, we generally consider this portion only the straight portion and ignore this portion. And, uh, and then a, a normally consolidated clay is one that there is a uh, in the uh, there are in the field when you calculate consolidation there are two type of consolidation is the one is normally consolidated and other is over consolidated. Normally consolidated soil means what? The soil which has not been subjected to a higher pressure than the present overburden pressure. So, that means, if there is a uh, if, the, if you see the history then uh, if I collect a sample from here whatever pressure we will get and uh, it might have not got greater pressure than that. So, that is called normally consolidated soil. And when the soil is normally consolidated then plot is like this that I have already explained and, uh, and then and if, if the soil is uh, nor uh, not normally consolidated uh, that means, uh, uh, the, the, the that, is, that means another one is the over consolidated that means, uh, if, if there is a uh, deposit of clay layer suppose, if deposit a clay layer something like this and then uh, if I uh, collect sample and find out uh, what is the present overburden pressure and you may find that if you uh, know the details of the uh, this, this soil layer you may find that this soil layer has been subjected by subject to a higher pressure than the present overburden pressure. That means, it was already consolidated and because of some reason may be pressure is released. So, this type of soil is called over consolidated that means, present overburden pressure whatever present overburden pressure it has been subjected to a higher pressure than the present one. So, if the soil is over, over consolidated then uh, we have to find out uh, that over consolidation pressure and there is a uh, method uh, called uh, suggested by Krasagande uh, that is how to find out over consolidation pressure and to find out this over consolidation pressure uh, there is a uh, uh, sorry uh, one more thing I missed actually uh, the normally consolidated soil as I have mentioned that uh, if I if I plot normally consolidated soil we typically get a curve something like this that means, initially there is a little curve and then straight line. Whereas, if I plot over consolidated soil if I plot over consolidated soil we will never get a never get a straight line will be continuously continuously a curved one parabolic a parabolic curve even though you plot this is log 
this is log p and this is e and this is e versus log p and this is actually normally consolidated normally consolidated and it is over consolidated if it is over consolidated this is never be a straight line if it is not straight line then how to uh, uh, then then automatically what will be the conclusion this soil must be a over consolidated soil. So, the, if it is soil is over consolidated soil then uh, the normal uh, the normal uh, consolidation theory whatever I have shown before that means, uh, the slope of the line is uh, C c equal to delta E divided by log 10 base P 2 over P 1 this way we calculate and then there is a some formula to find out consolidation settlement I will discuss. So, this is actually not there that particular slope is not different points slope are different. So, to to calculate the consolidation set consolidation settlement for over consolidated soil generally we need to find out what was the over consolidation pressure first you have to determine and to determine this over consolidation settlement there is a procedure suggested by Krasa and uh, by according to this method actually what you have to do you have to find out the point on this curve by I estimation you have to find out the point of greatest curvature suppose this point is A. So, you have to first locate the point of greatest curvature once you get the point of greatest curvature from there you have to draw an horizontal this is the one suppose A B is the horizontal and again from that point A you have to draw another line actually that is tangent tangent to A. So, suppose this is A C, A C be the tangent to this point and then next part will be if uh, uh, this angle uh, we have got A B line and A C line. So, it has got an angle between A B to A C there is an angle then what you have to do you have to divide this angle equally and that way and draw another line suppose dividing this angle suppose C A B angle C A B is there you can divide equally divide equally by line A D you can draw the line A D. So, that means what is the procedure first find out the point of greatest curvature from there draw a tang, uh, horizontal and then again from that point draw a tangent and then that between the tangent and horizontal there will be angle and that angle you can divide equally by a line drawn A D. So, that so that we have got a A D line. Next part is when this see the E log P curve and then you will see that it is continuously curved, but towards end may be little tendency of becoming straight and that portion actually you have to tangent draw a tangent and produce backward suppose this is the one this is the one this towards end of the curve you draw tangent and produce backward to intersect line A D and when this line intersect with A D this line that suppose this intersecting point is F suppose the intersecting point suppose F and this F actually finally, uh, you can the value f you can produce here on this the when you produce on the x axis read the x axis and that value of pressure will give you that is nothing but pre consolidation pressure. So, that means, uh, what you have to do normally if the soil is uh, normally consolidated then if you plot E versus P it will be curve, but when you plot in a semi log one that means, one side linear one side log then you will get a uh, straight line. Whereas, if the soil is uh, over consolidated and if you collect a sample and test it and if the test results you plot in a E p curve that is curve and also if you plot, plot in a semi log also it will also give you curve. Then in that means, when you get a E log p curve a curved one then that is actually the over consolidated soil. If the soil is over consolidated then you need to determine the value of uh, pre consolidation or over consolidation pressure. What is the procedure? Procedure as suggested by Krasagande 
the look at the curve find out the point at a greatest curvature suppose shown in the in this curve as a and from a draw a horizontal and also from a you draw an tangent and then between this horizontal and tangent there will be angle made, made by this divide equally by another line suppose a d suppose this one and then from the main curve of the e log p curve from the end you draw a tangent produce backward to intersect that dividing dividing line that is a d and that intersecting point become the the uh, point and from that point you produce vertically on x axis and then read the x axis that gives you the pre consolidation pressure. Okay. So, this is the so that means normally consolidated means the soil which has been uh, uh, which is uh, present overburden pressure is the maximum overburden pressure or the soil layer has not been subjected to a higher pressure than the present overburden pressure. What is the no over consolidation pressure? that the soil layer which has been subjected to a higher pressure than the present overburden pressure and in that case your E log P curves will not be straight line and if it is not so, uh, if, if it is so then you need to find out pre consolidation pressure. What is the method? That is method is pre con uh, uh, Kastragante method and Kastragante method how to find out I have just explained I will not repeat again. Uh, so, so, this is the procedure also uh, written what I have mentioned all are written here you have to draw a line on a uh, from horizontal line from the point of maximum curvature then draw a tangent then divide the angle then uh, tangent from the straight portion of the curve produce backward to intersect a d and find out locate the intersecting point f from a f actually produce downward on the x axis and then read the x axis the x axis value in pressure the pressure value in the x axis is nothing but the uh, pre consolidation pressure of the uh, of the soil okay so this is the way you one has to find out the uh, pre consolidation once you know the pre consolidation pressure then following next step you can find out the consolidation uh, total settlement that i'll come i'll discuss uh, later on thank you thank you